Praise the Lord, everybody. I am Pastor Brian Phillips, and we are Truth Ministries of Charlotte, North Carolina. And it is a pleasure and an honor to be able to say that God woke me up today, started me on my way, gave me another opportunity to see a day that I've never seen before and a day that I will never see again. I truly give him all the glory, and I want to give the honor to God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. And so on this day, I have so much joy in my spirit because I have an opportunity where God has provided a platform to speak his word in these last and evil days for those who may not know the goodness of the Lord on this day. I'm grateful to be able to say that I can be a representation of the kingdom. And so uh, before I go any further within this message that I have today, I want to do what I've always done, which is acknowledge God first with a word of prayer. Our precious Father, in the name of Jesus, all the glory belongs to you today. Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for allowing me to stand here today to speak your words. And Father, as I prepare myself to decrease in asking that you would increase, Father, I ask you to have your way. Let your word resonate with your people in these last and evil days, that someone's heart, spirit would be touched, that someone may turn their life unto you today, someone who may not know who you are that would receive you into their life. In the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. And so today is a wonderful day. It is a awesome day. And today, there are so many things that are transpiring in the world that we see that is going on around us. And um, I think the best way for me today to go into this message is to, to clearly start out with the word of God. Um, as I lay the foundation for the message, I'm going to lay that foundation for this message by giving you the word of God. And so I'm going to be coming and starting out from the book of 2 Corinthians, and I'm going to be reading from the 10th chapter, and I'm going to read three verses of God's word. And for those, all of our family and friends that may be watching on social media platforms, uh, I thank God for you today. Um, today's word is, is, is a word that God has given to me because when I see what is going on in the world, the one thing that has always concerned me is that there's not enough preparation. People must be prepared for the things that they're going through. And if you have been called by God to speak his word in these last and evil days, then you have a responsibility to prepare God's people for the things that they have to endure and go through. And God has gave us the perfect roadmap. He has given us the perfect preparation for every aspect of our lives and the things that we must endure and go through. He put it right in his word. And so on this day, one thing I can say is I don't have to ask nobody to take my words for anything because I'm going to give you God's word. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for that today. I'm thankful for God's word, who is, which is everything. His word is everything. And so it's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I'm going to start from the 10th verse. I'm sorry, from the third verse. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, it says we do not war after the flesh. Verse 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5 says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And the word of God goes on to say in verse 6, it says, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And so as I choose a topic for today, Today, I want you to know that many of us, and I'm not talking about just the believers, those who are actually believers that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, those that believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the world itself. We are at war. We are at war. And when I speak of war, I'm not talking about the kind of war that requires uh, weapons and guns and, and physical 
a physical confrontation. I'm not speaking of that kind of war, but I'm speaking according to the scripture in which I just read to God's people that we are at spiritual war. This is a spiritual war that we are fighting every day that we open our eyes because the enemy is raging. See, the fight that we're fighting is not a carnal fight, but it's spiritual. Hallelujah. And as a believer of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we don't fight our fight in a way which is carnal. And so what I want to do is shed some light on this today because I want to open up the eyes of people, those who may be watching, those that are here today, that that fight that we're battling every day, the battle of the mind, things that we're being attacked from from a spiritual perspective because the enemy is always raging, he's always busy, he has a job. See, the reality of it is Satan knows that he has already been defeated, that his time is winding up, and so he has a responsibility to turn as many of us from the will of God as possible. And he is utilizing everything in the world that is at his disposal to deceive us and to push us further away from God and to keep us from receiving the promise which God gave to those who accept Christ and live holy and righteously. See, this battle is not a physical thing. This is a spiritual battle. It is the battle of the mind. Because in John 10 and 10, the Bible clearly lets us know who our enemy is. He says that the thief he cometh not but forth to steal and to kill and destroy. That is his purpose. The enemy's job is to destroy us. It is to keep us away from God's will so that we cannot receive the gift which God has through us, for us. That's why he says the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But he says, I am come that they might have life. And that they may have life more abundantly. This is why Jesus came. This is why the enemy is so busy. Because he understands that his time is winding up. And just like each and every one of us, this goes for the Satan himself. No man knows the day nor the hour in which Jesus Christ will return. That means that the enemy must stay on his job. He must stay relentless. He must stay busy every day looking to deceive and lead as many of people as he can away from the will of God. And why does he do that? Because his ultimate goal is for us as people in the world to worship him. This was the reason why devil, the enemy in his Angels were cast out of heaven from the beginning because Satan wanted the same worship that God received. And so his job is to deceive us. What does he do? He uses every carnal thing of the world that is around to keep us manipulated, to keep us. That's why there's liquor, there's drugs, there's pornography. There's so many different things that we as people in the world are battling with every day and it's not a physical fight. It's a spiritual fight. These things are to deceive you because these things the enemy presents them through us. We live in a society today, people, where everything that God hates has been glorified to the highest level. That's why everywhere you go, every corner you look at is a liquor store. You can find drugs anywhere you want. You can go and buy pornography anywhere you want. There is sin everywhere around us to the point where we live in a nation now where our nation has legalized sin to the highest. That's why lasciviousness, sex, all of these things things are promoted. Every time you turn the television on, these are tools that the enemy uses. Our music, all of the music that the young people are listening to today, it glorifies drugs. It glorifies death. It glorifies everything that is not of God. That's why you got to protect your mind. You have to be careful what you expose yourselves to. 
First Peter 5 and 8, it tells us, it says, to be sober, be vigilant. To be vigilant is to be watchful. You got to watch. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour. That's the enemy's job. It is to devour you. It is to lure you in with deception in the things that feel good to the flesh. Fornication. That's why every time you turn on the TV, you don't see them promoting marriage. But they're promoting condoms. They promote fornication. That's why we live in a world today where lesbianism, homosexuality, the things which God spoke of as an abomination, the things that God hates, it is promoted every day. Every commercial you turn on, you see two sisters kissing one another. You see men holding hands and kissing each other. These things are promoted. The tools in which the enemy use, it's media, it's television. That's why, have you ever noticed, I'm, I'm noticing it every day. If you sit your kids in front of even cartoons these days, you can't sit your kids in front of all cartoons because even cartoons are glorifying things that are not of God. These are tools that the enemy is using to mesmerize our children, to keep them stuck. You ever see a child, he'll sit in front of a TV for hours at a time. He won't move. He's stuck. He's mesmerized. These are the tools of the enemy. Paul wanted us to understand something. He said that the carnal weapons that we're speaking of are, these are the things in which the enemy will use. These are the carnal weapons, and these are the things that the believers, we, we do not, we tear down strongholds, but we don't utilize the carnal things. The carnal things that he's speaking of is wealth, is glory, is power, is cleverness. And we as believers, we do not utilize these things, but that's why you see that the way things get done within our society, within our nation, within our Senate, within our Congress, even our president, the way that things get done is through power. It's through money. Those who have money, they dictate. They control what goes on in the world. It's not the preacher. It ain't the preacher. It's your Congress, your Senate the people that we ran full speed to vote in, the people that control the world, and they control the world through what? Through wealth, through their power, because they want to be glorified. They want to be recognized. They want prestige. And the enemy is using these people as tools to keep as many people deceived and away from God as possible. We at war. The enemy is using everything that he has to his disposal to destroy us. And the greatest weapon, the greatest weapon, hallelujah, hallelujah, that Satan is using these days is the preachers. It's the preachers, the false prophets. It's the preachers who have taken words, God's word. They have distorted it. They have watered it down to make people feel better about how they live their lives in error. Why? Because they want power. They want prestige. They want mega churches. They want money. And so while your soul is going to hell, they'll take your offering and your tithes and they buy big houses and they buy big cars and they live good. And then they come to church and tell you how blessed you're getting ready to be even though you living in sin every day and walking in error every day. You have no conscience. You have no remorse. You don't repent for sin. You do whatever you want to do and they make you feel good about it. Come on in the church. Let's dance. Let's shout. Let's have a good time. And then you walk out of the church and you go right back into perdition. You go right back into sin. You go right back into the hands of that man that ain't your husband or that woman that ain't your wife. You have not been convicted by nothing that has been spoken. You don't even go to that brother and say, you know what? It's time for a change in my life. Either you're going to marry me or you're going to be done with me. It's the deception. 
because we cater to the things that feel good to the flesh. It's a war. It's a fight. But I want you to know that in Jesus, there's power in his name. There's power in the blood. That's why Jesus came into the world. That's why he came. That we may have life and life more abundantly. Satan already knows it's over for him. His time is short. He don't know when Jesus is coming. But his job is to make sure that he keep as many of you from inheriting the kingdom of heaven as possible. That's his plight. That's what he does. That's why the scripture tells us in Hebrews 4 and 16, it says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Many of you are battling against things in the mind. You're struggling with things. I want you to know that that comes with the territory. None of us can be deceived. I'm a pastor. I love Jesus Christ. But I want you to know that the works of the flesh are real. I live in the flesh. But that's why we got to be able to put on the whole armor of God as I get into that in the end because I'm going to give you something to fight with. But you got to be ready. Like I can't lock myself in a hole somewhere and so that I can never look at another woman again. None of us can do that. I want you to know less is real. Women are attracted to men. Men are attracted to women. But I thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit because with the Spirit of God, it keeps me content with the love in which the Spirit has given me for my wife. So I honor her. So I don't lust over other women. But lust is real. Everywhere I go is going to be women. And in this world, our women, they do not adorn themselves. The enemy has deceived them. Everything they put on is to insinuate everything that belongs to their husbands. That's why when the women walk around now, they got everything hugging their private parts. Everything's tight. Everything is worn short. It is to attract men so that they can have attention from men. But the reality of it is God is waiting to bless you with a good husband, a man that's going to love you and only you. And he's going to respect you. And he'll love you. But guess what? You ain't going to find him in the bar. If you're going to the bar to get drunk, you think you're going to find your knight in shining armor in the bar? In the club? High? Barely can walk? But he look cute to you. You like his dreads. He got a little money. He got a little jewelry on. He brought you a couple drinks. This is the deception of the enemy. This is how the devil works. He wants you to keep chasing after this one and that one and this one and that one. Because guess what? If you keep doing that, then you'll never honor God's word. You'll never have a husband. You'll be a baby mama to four different baby daddies. And you'll be raising your kids on their own. You'll be in child support court every 30 days. And you'll be angry. Mad at everybody else when you could have honored God's word. But here's the problem. How will our sisters know to honor God's word? How will they know how to adorn themselves? How will they know how to keep themselves and to fight against the temptation of the flesh if the preachers won't preach it? If the preachers won't teach it? How are our sisters going to know? How are our brothers going to know? As I said, the, the preachers are the greatest weapon that Satan is using. Because they sound good in the pulpits. They use charisma. They use all of these tactics. And this is to entice you. This is to keep you in. And people love it. They can't wait. They come into the church. They want to hear about how God getting ready to bless their life. How you getting ready to get a financial blessing. God getting ready to give you everything you want and everything. And then they tell you, the Lord showed me something about you. You getting ready to do this and you getting ready to do that. And you go home while you smoking your little weed and drinking your little wine to wind down. And you laying in your bed and you saying, boy, church service was good. The preacher, he was preaching. I can't wait for my blessing. God getting ready to do something. 
do we not see the deception? That's why preachers like myself, I know I'm never going to be popular. I'm content. I didn't get into this thing to be popular. I don't need prestige. I don't need power. I don't need none of that. All I want is to see people come to Christ because I am a living witness of how good God can be. And I want that for everybody, for every soul. I want you to come to Christ. I want you to repent and turn away from sin so you can see how God moves in your life, how everything you're battling with, everything you're struggling with, everything that you're lacking, how God can give you the increase. And all he's doing is sitting at the door and waiting for you to walk through it. Come on. Just like the weed man waiting on you. Come on. The dope man's waiting. The ABC store's always open. That's the deception. When a preacher allow a sister to come and say, well, yeah, I like women. I was born that way. That's a contradiction to everything that God tells us in his word. God made man from man. He made woman. And made woman for what? To be a helpmeet for man. He ordained marriage. That's man and woman. That's not woman and woman. That's not man and man. It's not. But we glorify it. That's why you can go to women and get a marriage license in any state pretty much in all 50 of them. And you can go and you can be married and you can live your life and you can do what you want to do. And the devil was clapping because that's two more down. But today I come to rebuke Satan. Because James 4 and 7 tell me, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And we got to learn how to resist the devil. But if the enemy is not, if the preachers are not teaching, how do we resist the devil? How? How do we do it? We got to know how. People don't even recognize that they operating in sin and indulging in certain things because it has become so regular to you that you would never even know that the things that you're doing, saying, how you're living your life, how you're carrying yourselves, little basic things that you do every day that is sin in the eyes of God, you would not even know. Why? Because the preachers don't teach it. So how would you know? How would people know? This is why I have to be not only a preacher of the gospel, but a teacher. I have to show people in the word the things in which God hates. The Bible speaks of abomination. Let's go to the scripture. We're going, I'm going to give you something, and I'm going to go a whole other route, but I'm going to go here because I know that we need this. Because this is the deception. This is how the enemy works. And I'm sick of it. I'm going to fight. I'm going to stand up. Because I have to. Now, before I say another word, let's clarify something. One thing I do as a preacher is I've always stood up here and says that I don't agree with a lot of the preachers and how. And I don't want to get anything misconstrued. I want people to understand. Even for my preachers, my, my, the, if you're preaching the gospel out there and you may watch this and you may feel that. Because, um, you know, some people might say, oh, Pastor Phillips, he's a hater. You know, he be hating. I've heard people say he mad because he don't got no anointing. So just because I'm not flying back and forth across the the stage and I'm speaking in Harmon Lennox and all that, I don't have no anointment. That's all right. I can take that. I ain't mad at you. You got a right to say what you want to say about me and feel how you feel. You don't stop nothing. So that's cool. I'm good with that. But what I do want to do is clarify something because I don't want the preachers, no preacher to ever think that I'm talking. If you s preach with Harmon Lennox, if you preach with a lot of charisma, I want you to know I don't have no problem with how you preach your word as long as you put some substance behind it. Period. What I don't agree with is these preachers with all of these harmonics and all of this entertainment to entertain you with no substance. They don't warn you. They don't tell you the truth about nothing. They deceive you and they mislead you and make you feel good about the era that you're living in. That's what I don't agree with. So if that's you, I'm talking to you. Period. Other than that, I respect any preacher that's preaching the gospel and I don't care how you deliver your word as long as you're giving people the truth you preach a sound doctrine hey more power to you and, and I'm hoping that we can work together that's because I want to clarify that because I, I hear things you know I hear things I'm out here I live in the natural I know what's going on I know people talk 
People think I'm throwing shots. I ain't got time to be throwing shots. People dying. The devil's throwing shots. And his shots is landing. People dying every day that don't know Jesus. People's souls being lost for eternity. I ain't got time to fight against the actual body of Christ. We're supposed to be the example. This is why people are failing in their walks because the example has failed. Let's see what the words say. And, and the reason why I went here, to, and I went to Proverbs 6. I went here because I really want to lay this out for you. People don't understand. Every day we're indulging in all types of sin, and we don't even realize what, you know why we don't realize it? Because the preachers have a responsibility to teach the people what God hates as well as what God loves so that they know. At least then you have a choice because you know. You know what God hates. You know what God loves, and then it's ultimately your choice to choose right from wrong. And let the preachers teach the gospel that the word may convict you and stir you up. Hallelujah. Proverbs 6, verse 16. These six things do the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto God. These things. You'd be surprised. Listen, I want you to hear this. A proud look is an abomination to God. A proud look. Somebody that look at you like they better than you. Like y'all don't put y'all pants on the same way. They look down on you. And the saddest part is it's going on in the church every day. People walk in the church the church folks look down on you. They supposed to be the example. They're supposed to show by example love, compassion. People walk into the church, they might be broken. They may be going through trials and tribulations. You don't know what they're going through, and you're so busy with your nose turned up like you better than them. Don't you know that a proud look is an abomination to God? You'd be surprised. Small things like that. How we look at people. A lion tongue. Jesus. How many gossipers and backbiters do we got? People lying on one another, causing confusion. We, are, we talk to people like that every day. People call your phone, you know, oh, they go, bruh, I know he can really lie about something. We don't even realize that the smallest things that we indulge in every day willfully, we don't even understand how serious it is that these things are actually an abomination. People that lie always lying about something. You know they don't tell the truth about nothing. They don't even realize how serious it is. Why? Because this ain't popular preaching. Why? Because a lot of our mothers and fathers and uncles and cousins and sisters and brothers and, and husbands and wives are liars. That's all they do is lie. Jesus, a lion tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. Verse 18 says, a heart that deviseth in wicked imaginations. This somebody always looking to stir up drama. Oh, my God, I know, I know everybody in the church, and everybody watching can bear witness to that. You know somebody that every time you talk to them, they looking to stir something up. They looking to start something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you how I live. If somebody call my phone, and I pick that phone up, and I say, hello, and they say, hey, what's going on, bro? And I say, what's good with you? Hey, man, hey, you heard that such and such said this about you, and they've been talking about you. They've been talking about your wife. They've been talking about your kids. They've been talking about your church. They've been talking about this, and they've been talking about that. And you say, yeah, oh, that's unfortunate. That's me. That's how I deal with things. Oh, that's unfortunate. I make sure I keep them in prayer. And people will look at you like something wrong with you. But you know what? You know who the enemy is working through? The person on the other side of the phone. And they act like they're your best friend. They act like they love you. And guess what? When they get around other people, they talk about you. You ain't exempt. Because these people love to keep drama going. And you know what I love to do? 
What I love to do is when I hear something, when somebody talking about me, if you put my name on something, guess what? I'll pop up on you. I love to put them in a room in front of the person that you said this. Now you say he said it, and you here, and now I'm here, and then they in there like, uh, 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 don't start it now. You said it, right? Didn't he say this about me? I've been there. I had people who had try to sling me under the bus. I'm not the one. If you put my name on something, I'm going to pop up on you. I'm going to pop up. You're not going to water my name down. I don't do that because I like to expose the enemy. The devil who works through people, you got to expose it. Don't let it go. Expose it. Oh, yeah, Pastor Philip said this about that person. Yeah, well, guess what? Let me know next time that person going to be around you because they told you, and then I'm going to pop up. Don't even tell them I'm coming. What I say? These people are always looking to cause confusion. Whether it's in the world, whether it's in the body of Christ. You know what the Bible calls them? In the scripture, it calls them revilers. People that speak negative against others. Looking to cause confusion. You know what else in that same scripture? Revilers, you know what they cause? They cause dissimulation, division, and discord amongst the people. It's all right there. That's all they good for. And need, this is what we up against every day. These are the things that we don't see. This is the spiritual warfare. We don't even understand that a lot of us are indulging in these things. And God, and it's the church folks who doing this stuff, and they think that they good with God. But every chance they get, they in their little groups talking about people. What do you think? You exempt from the scripture because you saved? So you say you saved? I don't care if you've been saved 30 years. You ain't exempt from the word of God. You got to live according to the word, and you got to stay living according to the word. Until the end of time. Hallelujah. To the end of your time. That's right. The Bible says, feet that be swift and run into mischief. Ooh. Some people can't wait. They can't wait to go run into something. That's why as a husband, I have a responsibility. That responsibility not only to be a good husband, to be a good father, but also to be a protector of my wife. I I have to, sometimes you got to protect your, your wives. Husbands, protect your wives. Be careful. It's your responsibility. Those are your wives. God has made them the weaker vessels. That's not to say that they're weak, but that is to say that sometimes women have their own ways of how they do things, and women can trap themselves up with that talk because women like to get on that phone. They like to talk. They like to, you know, they like to conversate, and you got to be careful. Make sure that those conversations don't go left. Because your wife can find, there's been plenty of times I heard my wife on the phone, I'll be oh, wait a minute, you might not, don't say that. I don't know who that is, but tell them you'll call them back. That don't sound like that's going right. Don't get yourself caught up and in trouble with God, and you know. And when people don't know the reason why they don't know, why? Because this kind of teaching is not being done. People don't understand that these things are an abomination. These are the things that God hates. These are the things that stink in the nostrils of our God. But yet they're so common. Some of us can't wait to get on Facebook. You know what Facebook is? It's a tool for gossip. That's all it is. It's a tool for gossip. People get on there and tell all their business. Had a hard day at work today. They tell a whole bit. Hey, some people whole life on Facebook. That's why I don't mess with Facebook like that. I got a page, but I don't do it like that. Some people, I mean, now Facebook can be used for positivity as well. That's why if I use it, I'm going to post something about Jesus. You know, something positive. But other than that, I don't touch it. And most of the times now, I'm learning God is convicting me in my spirit, he's teaching me how to stay away from it. I don't even like to even go to Facebook because I know as soon as I go to it, I might see something that may grieve my spirit. I'm winging myself off of Facebook. 
You know what I'm saying? If you if you alcoholic, guess what? When you go through that process and, and you accept Christ and he's going to clean you up, guess what? God going to give you the power through the blood of Jesus and he's going to wing you off that liquor. That's why I gotta get, I'm getting winged off of social media. God is slowly but surely, he's taking me further and further away from it. Hallelujah. Verse 19, a false witness that speaketh lies, wow, and he that soweth discord among the brethren, Jesus. You know how many people cause confusion and discord that through rumors and gossip people stop doing? I've had people that have come to me and said that they didn't really want to rock with me or talk to me or have a conversation with me or they don't really like me because of some things that somebody else said how I treated them. You got to be smarter than that. How you know that that other person that they talking about, that that person is actually the one who said he got issues and that's why they talking against them. You got to be careful. People funny like that. Oh, I don't like Pastor Phillips. He say this and say that. But guess what? That brother only don't like me because I seen error in him, corrected him through the word, and now he hating on me. But then if you take that and gobble that up and you say, oh, that's why I ain't never talked to you, man. I heard them, you know, they were talking about you. You got people might not want to come into your church because people talking about your church, they talking about you. Oh, that brother ain't right. He ain't right with God or whatever. Listen, these that is an abomination unto God. That same church person that spoke against me, that's an abomination. That's causing discord and amongst the brethren. It's confusion. If somebody spoke against my walk, guess what? I can tell you this too. They speak in lies because I know where I stand with God. I fear God. I love God. That's why you ain't never going to catch me hating on the next person or talking against the next person or teaching that madness. Preachers teaching that. Like the church is a gang. Oh, we got to stand together. It's us against everybody. Oh, come on. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. We're one body, but many members. Preachers teaching hate. They teach their members how to hate other members, how to stay away from other people. When did Jesus teach hate within the body of Christ? What scripture is that? Foolishness. This is how the enemy works. These are the spiritual, these are the things that we're battling against every day. We're up against it. It's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's a mind thing. Hallelujah. Let me get, let's go to the, let's go to the scripture, right? I want to I give you something. I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians and I'm going to go to chapter 11. Because I'm going to hit it on a nail right now. This is why so many people are deceived. And you know where it's coming from? It's coming from the church. A lot of it is coming from the church. It's coming from the preachers. Because they are tools of Satan. Jesus warned us about this. Many shall come in my name. Many shall come in my name. Casting out demons. He called them workers of iniquity. They were not servants of Christ. They were servants of the enemy. And whenever there's error in the word of God, Satan has an open door to utilize you to keep pushing that error. That's why so many people are so arrogant with the word of God. Because that is the tool. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. We have many, many preachers in the churches today that are like that. False, deceitful, they use cunning words. It sounds good. It is to entice you to follow and believe what they tell you. It says, in no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That is the, that is the example. That it is the enemy himself who can transform himself into something that is of a light, that it is positive to deceive. 
And he been at it since the Garden of Eden. That's where it started. That's where it started. Adam and Eve and all of their glory in the garden still deceived. That's how powerful Satan is. If he could deceive them in their glory. If he deceived the third of the angels who were in heaven and followed him out. You don't think we up against it? No man knows what God has prepared for us. We could not even imagine the glory. But they were in the glory. And it was the enemy who still deceived them to come out of glory to come be with me because I got something better for you. And you think we ain't up against it? You think this fight that we fight in every day, this spiritual warfare that we have every day, that's how real it is. That's how powerful Satan is. Every little thing you battle with, the devil see it. You always stressed out over money, so you know what? He's gonna, he gonna attack your finances. Because he knows he can get you down that way. But ultimately, his job is this it is to keep you as far away as possible from walking within the will of God. So many people today say, I'm not going to nobody church. I'm down. I don't mess with these preachers. Why? Because the TV can't wait to show you how wicked the preacher is. Why? Because media belongs to the enemy. That's why you don't never see people getting saved, delivered. You don't see demons getting cast out. This stuff, they don't play that stuff on TV. You're not going to see deliverance. You're not going to be seeing people get set free on TV. No, you're going to see how the Catholic priest was sleeping with some little boy. You're going to see how some preacher just went to jail for embezzlement because he was stealing millions of dollars from the church. And this is what the enemy is going to show you so you know what you're going to say when you see it. That's why I don't go to church. That's why I don't go in no church. That's why I don't do preachers. They ain't no good. They wicked. They ain't no good. That's the deception. That's the trap. That's the tools that the enemy is using. Everything in the world is to his disposal. He uses it to keep you away from God's glory. That's why you look in here. Why you think every chair in here ain't filled up? Because the devil going to do everything he can to keep you away from this message. He don't want you to hear. He don't want you to hear through the word of God what's going on, how he's using his tools to mislead people. He don't want you in the church that a preacher's preaching that. He don't want you up in here. He don't want you to receive nothing that you need. But everything that's going to mislead you and deceive you, that's what he makes sure you see every day. That's what he does. That's his job. The Bible says, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, who in shall be according to their works. Ministers walking around like they righteous. Just as wicked as they want to be. Just as wicked as they want to be. You know why they're never exposed in the churches? Because the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit are not manifested in those churches. So they're never exposed by God because God ain't in it. Because God ain't got nothing to do with it. And every once in a while, you're going to see a miracle because guess what? Satan has the power to deceive you. He, Satan, let me break something down for you. I want to give you something. Receive this. If y'all watch, when you're watching out there, listen to this. When people have demons in them, those demons have to be cast out. Satan has the power. He has the power to use one of his ministers to cast a demon that he can command to come out of somebody that's filled with a demon. To make everybody in the church say, ooh, he just cast out a demon. That's deception. He can use a preacher to cast a demon that he put in somebody, and he can tell that demon that's in that person, come on out. 
And when you see that preacher lay hands and that demon come out of that person, and you say, oh, my God, he just casted out a demon. And now everybody's flabbergasted. Everybody's like, wow, that preacher got power. He got power. It's deception. That's the, that's the deception of the enemy. That's how powerful Satan is. He is the head over the demons. He is the head over his angels. And he has dominion over them. That's how real that is. People don't even realize that. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if your spirit don't bear witness, if your spirit say that ain't of God, the Holy Spirit in you is supposed to expose you, let it no, that's not God. But when the spirit ain't in it, how will people know? If nobody in the church got the Holy Spirit, then how will it ever be seen? That's why when you see certain things happen or you, you see prophecy or somebody in the Lord is using somebody, and if it's not of God, your spirit won't bear witness to it. Your spirit won't even bear witness to it. I know because I have been in plenty of places where I've seen people speaking in tongues and all kinds of foolishness. And, 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 and I said, the first thing I said, that ain't of God. My spirit don't bear witness to that. My spirit don't bear witness to that. Hallelujah. This is why we have to be able to tear down these strongholds. And it's a way in which we as spiritual people of God and believers, like I said, we don't fight our fight with carnal things of the world, but we fight, and this is how we fight. We fight in faith in the living God. We fight in prayer in obedience to the word of God. This is how we fight. These are the true weapons of the believers of the gospel. This is how we fight the enemy. We fight him through prayer and supplication. We fight him through fasting. We fight him by being obedient to the word of God. Hallelujah. And so let's finish it up. It's a familiar scripture for the believers, but for those that are watching who may not know, I'm going to give it to you. And I'll finish with these scriptures from the book of the Ephesians in the sixth chapter. I'm going to start reading from the 10th verse. This is where I will finish. The Bible says, finally, my brothers, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It tells us to put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to, to withstand the wiles of the, de the devil. Put on the whole armor of God that we would be able to withstand the wiles of the devil, the manipulations, the tricks, the schemes, the lies of the enemy. Because devil, the devil is not capable of nothing else but lies. He is not capable of the truth. And through the word, he will always try to deceive us because guess what? Satan knows the word too. The devil knows the word of God too. He knows it because he was in the presence of God. Why do you think he knows all of our weaknesses? Because he was in the presence of God. Hallelujah. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are the things that we're fighting against every day. It is a spiritual warfare. We are at war every day. The enemy is never going to take a day off. He does not quit. If you are able to rebuke the devil and tell him to flee away from you, guess what? He'll be back. He'll be back. If he couldn't get you one way, he'll come this way. But please believe he's coming. If we as the believers had half of the determination to see Christ as he did to make sure we don't see him, boy, you would not believe how many people would be saved today. Satan took that bitterness and anger and he put it to work. His job is to make sure that none of us receive the glory that he wants in. Because he knows that there's nothing he can say or do to go back. He has been cast out. Only thing waiting for him is the lake of fire. For when the angel comes with the key and the chain to bound him up, to cast him into the bottomless pit for a thousand years, then the Bible says that afterwards he will have again just a short period of time. 
But he knows it's coming. He knows his time to be bound and put into the bottom of the spit is coming. And he don't know when it's coming, just like we don't know when Jesus is coming. But he's already defeated. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Hallelujah. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. This is how we fight against the spirits that we're battling against. We fight with it with righteousness. We hold on to God's word. We hold on to his word. Even when it gets hard, we can call on the name of Jesus. This is why the preachers got to give it to the world. This is why y'all out there today, you may be battling with some things. I want you to know it's power in the name of Jesus. If you would accept Christ into your life the same way he was able to bring me out of fornication, that he brought me from drugs, he brought me from all kinds of madness that I was living in that world. And I want you to know today that he's waiting for you. He can do the same for you that he did for me. It's because of righteousness. Through the word of God. That every time that Satan come after me and try to deceive me. Because he's fighting against the preachers too. That's exactly who he wants. If he can turn me, then he can try to use me to turn you. Jesus. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hear that. The gospel is peace. The gospel is not fighting against one another. The gospel is not dissimulation and discord and division amongst one another. That's not the gospel. That's people. That's people. That's not God's word. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Ooh. I got to tell you, I, gotta, I keep my shield up every day. It is that faith that I have in Christ because I stand on his word the way I do. That every fiery dart that you throw at me, I can't do nothing but throw some love back at you. Because that's what the gospel teaches. So you can keep on firing them fiery darts. I got my shield up. I'm ready. This is what we got to do. This is how we protect ourselves. That shield, keep that shield up. Don't worry about what people say about you. You don't retaliate against evil. We don't do, the Bible says we do not render evil for evil. The scripture says that vengeance belongs to the Lord. You ain't got to fight your own battles when you got Jesus. He fighting them for you. The best way to fight against the enemy is not to allow him to entice you into retaliation. That's what he wants. Because if I retaliate against you, now I'm doing the same thing you was doing. That's why I don't. You can talk about me all you want. That's all right. I love you anyway. I love you anyway. Because I got that shield on. <laughs> and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is in the word of God. The helmet of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Satan wants us to fear him. His deception is to make you fear him and to worship. But God told me that he has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. So the only thing I fear is God. And the fear of God is where it starts. Thank you, Jesus. So in my closing, I just want to say this, and I want to say this, and I mean this, and I'm going, to, I'm going to close with this, Romans 8 and 30, and 31. It says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. It says, in whom he called, them he also justified. It says, in whom he justified, them he also glorified. They can't stop it. They can't stop you. And don't matter how much Satan fight against you, guess what? Those he predestined, 
<laughs> they can't stop it. He can't stop it. But the Bible says, what shall we, in verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? For those who were predestined shall be. That's why I don't got to worry about the fiery darts. I don't got to worry about what man think about me. I don't got to worry about what man say about my walk. Because those who God predestined, what does it say? He also, he called them. Man ain't responsible for my walk. I was called by God. You can't stop it. You can throw all the darts you want, but you can't stop it. When you've been predestined, you've been called by God. When you've been called, God will justify you. And through his justification, he's going to glorify you. And it's nothing that the enemy or nobody else can do to stop it. Make sure you put that whole armor of God on. Because it's coming. The darts, the hatred, the gossip, the backbiting, lust, the temptations of the world is coming. It's going to always be there. And you got to be able to put on the whole armor of God. You got to be able to strap up and get ready to go to war. Because the war, it is spiritual. It's spiritual. So I pray that God's word would resonate. I thank God for the opportunity to speak his word in these last evil days. And I pray that someone would receive God's word and that they would take everything that has been said today. If you went through, if you heard the scriptures, if not, go back, rewind the video, write the scriptures down, read them for yourself, pray over the word of God, let God's word resonate with you. That's why I preach it from the Bible. That's what I do love about social media. You can rewind that thing. <laughs> you can rewind it. Go back. Write those scriptures down. Get into the word. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. That a workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why I preach from the Bible so that you can go back into the word of God and you can read the scriptures. You can pray over the word of God and you can make sure you can study these scriptures and then you can make sure that you apply them accordingly. Because everybody don't have a church that they can go to where the preacher is going to preach. But we are here. Truth Ministries, Charlotte, North Carolina, 6630 East W.T. Harris Boulevard. Charlotte, North Carolina, 28215, 1.30 p.m. We here. Sweet D. Sweet D. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.